question that we have is about spot rezoning. So it ties in again with um, development in the neighborhood. Increasing density in a neighborhood is often a lively and contentious issue. And debates about density are often about the building form that will be used to increase density. Um, even several blocks from here, there's a spot re rezoning proposed at Kingsway and 11th Avenue that was not contemplated under the Mount Pleasant Community Plan. So these, we actually have three questions, which might be a lot to pack into 90 seconds, but uh, the questions are, should residents of neighborhoods such as Mount Pleasant be given more choice in the way density is increased? If elected or re-elected, will you commit to stopping the practice of spot rezoning, particularly when it contravenes the content, intent, and spirit of neighborhood plans? And what is your opinion of council policies such as Rental 100 and the interim rezoning policy that can override existing zoning and community plans? And if we'd start with George and work our way back. All right. Uh, thank you. It's just Large question. What I've focused on in the last three years is, is the issue of, of spot rezoning and, and defying the community plans that exist. I found it very troubling that we've done a lot of that over the last several years. It goes against what the communities have wanted and agreed to, and I don't think it's fair that we do this. So I've been very, very vocal about this in that we shouldn't be defying the community plans that are already agreed to. When it comes to Rental 100, I. I and, 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 the, and the CACs and how we're changing the way development happens. One of the challenges I believe uh, that neighborhoods have as development continues and as we grow is that we've moved a significant amount of money that used to be used for amenities, traditional amenities like pools, uh, like community centers, like parks, dog parks, into housing. So what we've done is we've taken all this money that we get from developers and we're putting it into more housing thus creating a bigger problem. Because the problem with development, you have to provide the amenities as the population grows. If you don't provide those amenities, I worry, and, we're, and I think things like uh, Little Mountain is gonna be an area, areas where we're not providing any traditional amenities, we're gonna see more crime, we're gonna see angry citizens, we're gonna see developments that nobody wants, we're gonna see people saying, what's wrong, with, why is our city being built incorrectly or wrong with towers or whatever it might be? We need to go back and look at those amenities and stop the spot rezoning and, and focus on the community plans and, and respect the community plans. No spot rezoning. Uh, well, short uh, answer is uh, yes, by no notion that in fact, I was uh, from my own neighborhood association, I was the chair of the Strathcona Neighborhood Association for a number of years, and in that capacity, I sat on the downtown east side local area plan. Uh, an extremely frustrating experience where our community wishes weren't entirely incorporated into the plan and we felt very betrayed by that. In fact, the whole notion of build form, the kind of scale of development, uh, the definition of affordable housing and social housing, these weren't addressed in the course of our community plan. In fact, the definition of affordable housing was sort of scratched on the back of a napkin after uh, three days of community public hearings uh, at the 12th hour and decided by a, a unanimous vote of the leading council. Um, so I will say that uh, I, 100% support the idea of empowered communities to decide what is the kind of form and the kind of densification they want to see in their community and how they actualize those benefits for their community. Uh, and that may be in the form of tower if that's what the community wants, but certainly spot rezoning is not a way to go and it, certainly when it betrays the intent of the community's plan, absolutely not. Uh, and then really quickly on Rental 100 and the notion of the trickle-down theory where uh, providing expensive rents will free up the less expensive rates. I do not consider $14.50 a month as an affordable for a bachelor apartment. I think we need to completely re-examine that entire process. I do think we need to build more uh, rental housing, but that's not the way. Yeah, I'm, uh Glad that uh, both uh, George and Pete brought up, brought up a couple of things. One is the lack of uh, park and rec amenities in many areas uh, that we could use CACs for, that we're not using CACs for, and those areas are still going to be starved, and we're talking about huge spots on the east side. Another is community consultation. People have come to these uh, hearings to put together community plans and given their input in good faith. I was part of one about 20 years ago where we realized at one point that no property developers were showing up at these hearings. Why? Because no matter what we said, they were going to get their way anyway. 
So we find that plans like this happen. There's a long, long consultation. People come out in good faith. And then at the end, the fix is in. Uh, and this feeds into the, the idea of, uh, of spot rezonings. Uh, zoning, in a way, represents, if you're zoning an area, it represents a fundamental sort of fairness, that you're going to have the same rights as your neighbor does. If you spot rezone, you're going, as they did in, um, in the Chinatown uh, uh, relaxation plan, you're going, okay, you stay, you stay, you stay, you get to make four million, you stay, you stay, and uh, you get to make a bunch of money too. That's not acceptable. Everybody has to be equal under the law in front of city hall processes. Anything else looks bad to citizens. It's demoralizing to us. Kemo, NPA. Before I worked for the um, city of Vancouver, I did work for the city of White Rock as um, chief engineer. I, I did work with the chief planner there. So I can't stress enough on the importance of an overall community uh, plan and the overall city plan. We must, we must stick with uh, equality and an open, transparent uh, way of dealing with developers. Everybody must uh, deal with the city in a, in a fair and open way. In, in, in an equal way. Density, when we bring density, we bring more than people. We bring parked cars, bring uh, uh, traveling cars, and we bring uh, extra roads into our sewer system and sidewalks, and a lot of these things need to be upgraded. And the CAC um, that the, each developer pays, uh, we need to know how much of that goes actually into building amenities for, for the neighborhoods. We need to have public open spaces. We need to, uh, uh, to have public amenities for each of these uh, developments. So uh, again, the question uh, or the issue is fairness, openness, and transparent. As long as we treat everybody equally and go to the public for their inputs and listen to the public and uh, public consultation, then we would have a good city plan that we can work with. Thank you. Should you, in your community, Mount Pleasant, have more control um, and choice in the way density is increased? Of course you should. That's democracy. Um, in the Green Party, we've been looking at Portland, where there is a, uh, an actual series of neighborhood councils that are consulted at the beginning of projects, where neighborhoods co-create a project before it gets to the city council table. Um, if elected, will I commit to uh, stopping the practice of spot rezoning? You did not want the rise in this community. I was the only councillor that voted against the rise development. <laughs> spot rezoning is no way to plan. What we need is a new citywide plan process like we had with the city plan process of a decade or more ago. It was very engaging of people. Everyone in their communities got to vote on what they wanted in their community. That's the way we need to go, to restart that and get a community-wide plan and change the zoning commensurate with what you want in your neighborhoods and that would stop spot rezoning. How do I feel about rental 100? Taxpayers are paying for the building of apartment buildings that are not affordable. $1,443 a month for a studio is absolutely um, irresponsible. Um, what about interim rezoning? You in the city did not get a chance to vote on the interim rezoning that came out of the Mayor's Task Force on Housing Affordability. It was brought in by vision through the council with not one shred of community involvement. I'm going to repeat this a few times tonight, but I'm seeing uh, a lot of uh, support amongst people here at the table sharing some similar ideas, and uh, to me that is a very optimistic feeling that a, a mixed party government is going to do some f phenomenal things for Vancouver. Um, to the uh, question at hand, um, should the residents have had uh, more input? Yes. Uh, if elected, would I commit, would Cedar Party commit to stopping spot rezoning? Um, uh, of course we would stop it. Um, we're against that. 
The reason these things happen is because there is an absence of neighborhood plans. We need to get back to a system using the city model, city plan as a model, and get neighborhood plans back in place so they form the framework that then invites responsible, common sense development back into neighborhoods. That's what happened or wasn't happening, which allowed things like STIR and Rental 100 to come in. It came in the absence of neighborhood plans being there. Um, in terms of uh, Rental 100, uh, STIR, if we make a, a, a clear affordable housing plan with a definition of what affordability really is, with zoning and bylaw commitments to enforce those things, with partner funding between the city, the province, and the government, not tied to any kind of developer, non-transparent dealing, then we can actually have neighborhood plans that work for the city. Well, good evening. Good evening. It's Raymond Levy from Vision Vancouver. And the, as I stated earlier, community planning is integral to how our city develops over time and engagement with our communities is how we create those community plans and why we had engaged the level that we have for a number of different plans, including the downtown east side where we had over 300 meetings with the local community. And now with Gravel Woodlands, we've initiated a brand new process that's never been tried before in our, in our Citizens Assembly initiative because we were listening to the communities where they were concerned with what was happening. don't go through that process, then we end up with results with the community is not happy with, and that's why we undertook that, that ex exercise. I know that um, there have been concerns, and uh, we're committed to making sure that we listen to people and try to find ways to solve those problems when they come. There are a number of uh, plans that are underway currently, and we'll develop those plans in consultation with the community. In, the, uh, in regards to the Rental 100 uh, uh, program, our intention is to continue that. That the Rental 100 pro uh, program provides needed rental housing replacement of those that are falling apart. When we don't have rental housing in our city, it does put pressure on those that are at the lowest end of the economic spectrum. And if we don't build it, currently the provincial government, federal government, absolutely will not. And so that's why we're stepping in. Before we get to Tim, could I please remind the audience that there will be no booing and no heckling. You will have a chance at the, after our questions to ask questions of your own. If we could treat all of the candidates up here with a modicum of respect. And if we could get Tim to be our final respondent, I think that's who we have left. All right, out over there we go, perfect. Raymond, if you really do believe, in the beauty and the importance of community plans, you don't approve a spot zoning the day after the community plan has been approved. Now let me say this, there's two ways to design a neighborhood. One way, you rely on planners in ivory towers. The other way is a community process, community planning. Community planning engages the entire neighborhood. Hundreds, literally, I'm not embellishing, of people. And not a month or two, but typically 18 months. And that's why it's so important that if we really do believe in the beauty of community planning, where all of us together, after work, on a volunteer basis, give birth to a development, give birth to a community plan, that we don't approve a spot zoning the very next day. Now, very quickly, just wrap up. Vision approved a bylaw change. Developer gets a 100% refund of their entire development cost levy if in the development a certain percentage of affordable units. Sounds like a great idea. But then they changed the definition of affordable. It's now affordable so long as it's rental, no matter how expensive the rental. So that is not affordable. For time immemorial, the feds, the province, the city, defined affordable as 30% of your income. That's no longer the definition. Out with vision, in with community planning.